is not Sam Wrestling. Introducing your host from New York, here is Sam Roberts. What up, Sam? What's going on, man? Ladies and gentlemen. Man, you know. 29 time, 24 7 WWE champion, R Truth. I do know what's going on. Yes, you do. But you left out 48 7 7 11, and I'm European. Yeah, no, I did leave those things out. I thought they were just made up, but I will include them if you want. I can put them onto the record. Yes, please, Sam. <laughs> people the correct title. <laughs> you're right. Did you ever think, you know, you, you're, you're 20 years now, 20 years if not more, actually more than 20 years into this wrestling career of yours, did you think that 2019 would be the year that you would set the biggest title record of your entire career? Absolutely not. Absolutely not, man. Uh, I knew I had promising things uh, to happen to me, things that I felt and knew, but this is one of them that just, like, came out of nowhere, far left field. Well, I feel like it's also one of those things that it's all about what you make of it, right? I, I remember the 24-7 championship getting introduced to the world and people being extraordinarily skeptical of it. People going like, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's dumb, it's this, it's that. And I feel like like you and a bunch of other people in the 24-7, 48, 365 European U.S. Open title division. Yeah! yeah. I, 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 I feel like you and your comrades said, we can make the most of this opportunity and we can turn it into something. Man, Sam, it's pretty much like life, man. Right. You take what you get and you make something with it, man. And they call this title, man, everything. They say it was ugly. And I, man, this title ain't nothing but what you make it, you know? And me and my colleagues have made the best of it, man. We, we took some, I guess, as you can say, shiz it and made lemonade out of it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. they didn't want to give it a chance, man. They didn't want to give it a chance at all, man. Like, Oh, man, look how ugly that belt is. When Mick Foley pulled it out of the bag, man, they said the belt was so ugly. When it was a baby, they put it in an incubator with tin and windows. <laughs> that's how ugly the belt was. Oh, that's, that's ugly. Now, huh? Now that's ugly. That's ugly, right? Yeah. But now everybody loves it, man. Yeah. Everybody loves it, man. Everybody wants to hold it. Is it? Is there a part of you, right, that when you start, like, getting positive feedback on the stuff that you're doing— as much as it feels good, right, and it's uh, like, oh, okay, great, I'm doing a good job. Is there a part of you going, I was, I've read what you said before. I know none of you had faith in this. Don't try to jump on this bandwagon now. Um, no. <laughs> That's probably good. That's it. No, no, because because I knew, I, I, yeah, it's true, I knew what they said, what they said, but when I can change their opinion of something that they've seen and feel so strongly about and commented about, when I can change it, it's like it never happened before. How how deep in they the... will end up saying they Go ahead. will end up saying, oh, man, I didn't like this deal at first, or I don't remember what I talked about, or they will end up saying before I, I think about you didn't like this deal no more first because I turned them. Right, right, and that's part of it. I mean, it's almost better that they didn't come in with high expectations because that means that you turned them, right? That 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 says a lot about what you're doing, right? How uh how deep would you say into your career did you have to be before you could understand what to do with these opportunities and what you would make of them? I mean, I would imagine that if somebody came to you as a much younger man, let's say you're at the beginning of your career and you win a title and they come to you and they say, okay, tonight the ring announcer is going to beat you for your title. There must have been a time in your career where you'd say, what? I'm not losing to a ring announcer. Why am I going to lose this title to a ring announcer? <laughs> <laughs> you're absolutely right, man. What sense do that make me losing to a damn ring announcer? <laughs> Y'all crazy. That's a bunch of buffoonery. <laughs> you know, um, you're absolutely right, Sam, man. Um, I'm, I'm a more mature, grown, I'm a grown man now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a, a younger R-Truth, man, a younger K-Quick, um, 
Absolutely right, man. Um, and this takes, I guess, being molded by the business, being molded by life, being molded by the fans, um, being molded by your career, uh, your desire to, like, constantly perfect your craft in this business, trying to stay on top of the game, reinventing yourself, man. With all that maturity and everything said, man, it just puts you at a different mindset in life. And now, like I said, you take shit and make lemonade out of it. If the ring announcer is going to beat me tonight and I just want to listen to that, I'll make it the best ring announcement win victory you ever seen in your life. <laughs> and I feel like your whole 24-7 title run has been about bringing credibility back to the schoolboy, back to the roll-up. Now, at any moment, a roll-up could win a match. There were, for forever, we saw people kicking out of roll-ups. Now anybody can get anybody with a roll-up, and they're going to get the three count. Bro, and, and it's funny now, right? Because now regular matches are winning with roll-ups too now. Yeah. Like, people forgot. <laughs> they forgot, man. But now, bro, we, we, we're opening their eyes up to the realization of everything now. When you see, right, so like uh, I was I was actually recently looking at your WWE debut from 2000. So you're, or, or, or yeah, I think it was 2000. When you came out and uh, and surprised, as a surprise uh, backup for Road Dog. When you're now looking, how maybe it was 2003, whatever it was, 17 years later, 20 years later. When you're in WWE now and you cross paths with Road Dog and you see Road Dog is now a man in a suit who's contributing in a whole different way to the business creatively and, and becoming a new part of the way, you know, the machine continues to run. Do you think you look at him and go, oh, man, I can't wait to stop taking bumps and put a suit on and, and do something else? Or does he look at you and go, oh, man, he still gets to go out there and be in front of the crowd every night? <laughs> um. Damn, man, I, I never asked that question before, man. That's a good question. Yes. Um, I don't know, man. Me and me and Road Dog, me and Brian, man, like we 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 are friends. First of all, mm -hmm. friends, we feel like we're family, man. Um, and it's just a, I think it's a mutual respect thing when we see each other now, man. It's uh, we can look at each other's eyes and know what each other's thinking, thought about, um, the appreciativeness of of both of us, man. Of uh, Bro, from, from where I come from to, like, getting my first contract and to, like, I remember, like, yesterday, Road Dog come in and I was like, hey, man, Billy Gunn's out uh, for shoulder surgery. Uh, would you mind being my tag partner? And I'm like, you want me to be your tag partner? Man, it's just, like, nothing but the most love and respect for Road Dog, man. And if you put him in a square circle right now, he can still dizzle and do his thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I think it's just a mutual respect for, for each other, man. Uh he likes the fact that I'm still in the ring. He he pops every time. He's like, bro, you're still doing splits. Like, you're still – I'm like, yeah, man, you got to get some 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 spiffier suits too, you know? So it's like we're we each other about what we're doing, you know? It's like we're there. We're both in the same saddle, man. When Who do you, who who are the people that you think taught you the most about the entertainment aspect of, of sports entertainment? Because I feel like that's where – You've continued to develop more and more, and when you look at the the this part of your career, the later part of your career, you've put all the emphasis on the entertainment part, for the most part. And that's not, I mean, for a lot of wrestlers, the entertainment part is the part that does not come naturally. For a lot of wrestlers, they have the athletics, they have the in-ring skill, they have all this stuff, but the entertainment part, which I think is the most important part, doesn't necessarily come naturally to everybody. Who did you kind of pick up on that section of the business from? Oh, man. Um, two people. One person I studied and the other one kind of talked and pretty much guided me into it is I watched The Rock and Vince McMahon. Vince is um, he's the godfather of entertainment, man. He, he, uh, he would talk to me. I would do promo, Sam. I would do... Uh, interviews and do things that Vince was like, that's not our truth. But who the hell was that? That's you're entertaining. You can speak and be entertaining. You can go in the ring and be entertaining. You can just be around people and be entertaining, man. And I know naturally I'm an entertaining guy. It's like you can't go. I don't know if college has a class where you can go and learn how to be entertaining. Uh, but it's just I think it's something that naturally people have in them, and it just has to be brought out. Yeah. Um, I've always had it 
I've, I've always liked it is with my music. Um, uh, just with being funny. I, I've always had the entertainment. And to be in a business like wrestling and be able to, like, use that, add that as a, uh, I guess, as, a, as another little um, thing I have, a little niche, it just brings it full circle to me. Do you, when you have somebody like Vince McMahon, who's as invested as he is in the character, to the point that he's telling you that's not what our truth sounds like, that th- this isn't our truth, that's our truth. When you realize, wow, Vince McMahon is going home and he is thinking about who our truth is. Does that give you confidence in the sense that Vince McMahon thinks enough of me that he's taking my character and investing in it? Or does it put a ton of pressure on you? Cause now you go, Oh boy, this is something that he's got expectations for. Uh, I'll take the first two. No pressure at all. Uh, appreciation. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's like, honestly, Sam, man, I would say maybe like the last past two, three years, I've came into the character of like, like I, 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 I put that suit on. I know who this character is. I, I, I can make you laugh and jump down just by saying biggity, biggity, big boo. You know <laughs> I can, I can do what I want to do now. And I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and I know it works. I know it works. And when Vince says this to me or says that to me, believe it or not, when I'm getting ready to do something or uh, whether to speak or go out or whatever, I hear Vince in the back of my head. I, you need to be yourself. You need to be our truth. This is what no, what Archie wouldn't do that. He wouldn't say that. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't act that way. You're, you're, you're acting sad. You're acting all. Our truth doesn't need sympathy from nobody. He doesn't need. He don't. Vince has told me who this character is, and I know what he expects. Or like if I'm doing something and the guy's like, uh, I think that's great. We don't need to shoot it again. Uh, no man, I think Vince's gonna want this right here, man. I know how Vince about this that. So it, it, it's no pressure. It's just I'm appreciative to know what he expects and what he wants. And that's got to give you confidence as a performer. Like That's got to feel good to know that you know well enough that if you need a second take, you are you know that we need to do a second take. Like, no matter what anybody says around, yeah. no, no, we need to do a second one because that might have been good for you, but I know who the audience is here. Vince McMahon's the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I know that out the yin-yang. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do you, uh, what, what embarrasses you? I've been thinking about this because... Not only have you been able to go on television and make the most ridiculous things entertaining, but then I go online and I see that uh, you are completely expanding your reach on social media. I watch you on TikTok, TikTok, spreading whipped cream all over your abs. I see you. Yeah. I see you in Walmart, <laughs> taking your shirt off and standing in a shopping cart. And I swear, I look at these Walmart videos when you're action figure shopping. And I'm like trying to figure out like, is this a set? Is this a backdrop? Is this something? Cause this man is not standing in the middle of a public Walmart looking like our truth, full gimmick with no shirt on in the middle of the day. And I'm going, no, that's Walmart. He's he's standing up in a shopping cart right now. What in, what? in my wrestling gear. <laughs> yeah, that's in your gear. Looking at me. Yeah, that's not, <laughs> that's not, it's not like it's like incognito, Ronnie Killings is in Walmart doing something silly. It's, hey, that's our truth the star from television with no shirt on in his gear, standing up like he's an action figure in Walmart. Uh, <laughs> what, yes. what embarrasses you? Like, what can somebody say, I want you to do this? And you go, no, I'm not going to do that. That, that. that would make me feel silly. Um, I don't know, Sam. <laughs> I mean, my confidence, my confidence is so boosted. I'm so secure with myself as an individual, as a man, and, and as my character. To where, man, I feel like Superman. Dog. That's why I call myself the Suntan Superman. It's like, I, I don't know what. I don't know if I can be embarrassed, man. Um, I don't know. What a freedom! What a freedom to 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 get to the point in life where you're like, no, I'm pretty confident that I can pull off just about anything and it's not going to embarrass me. I can. I can, Sam. I can, I can almost pull off anything, man. I was actually going to uh, post a video of me pretending to lay some eggs like a chicken. <laughs> but, um, well, no, well, not lay them, but heat them up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sit on them like the mama do, man. But, like, even stuff like that, man. Like, you don't get, like, most guys from the streets or whatever to do nothing like that. Like, but it doesn't hurt me. It doesn't bother me. It's and it's real, man. Like the people still love to see me be me. That's me. That that's the R truth character. You don't know he might he might light a cigarette up. He might talk to an imaginary guy. 
He might <laughs> take his shirt off in, in Walmart. He <laughs> might show up at a guy's honeymoon in the bedroom. He might. Truth, there's no limit to the truth. Yeah, maybe maybe you'll just pop up online with some ridiculous teeth in your mouth saying, you know, lip syncing. Do you want a roast beef sandwich, but hold the beef because you don't like the violence? I don't like the violence. <laughs> that was good, wasn't it? it was, dude, here's what I couldn't believe about that. I couldn't believe how long it went, and I was looking like where the takes are. I couldn't believe how long it was and how you oh, you knew every word to it. <laughs> <laughs> It's something I've been wanting to do, man. It's like, you know what? I'm gonna do this now. It's pretty long, but I'm telling people to stay listen to uh listen to it. And it's got a lot of views on it, man. It's got to. Now, when you come yeah. when you come home, right, and, and, and you and you're with your wife, you're with your kid, you're with your family, whoever you're with, and you have to explain to them Look, we still got to make some content here. I know it's my day off. I know we want to. Yeah, we're going to go do Walmart. We're going to go do the food shopping. But while we're at Walmart, I want to do this. Or I need you to film me. I'm going to put these teeth in and I'm going to lip sync this thing. Do, do, the, do, do the people in your life understand that this is just the life that we're in now? Um, yes and no. Yes and no. Um, <laughs> I, I do get that. Um. Oh my gosh, Dad! Again, are you serious? Are you gonna like, Dad? Are you gonna really do that, mm -hmm. Dad? All my friends at school said you're the leading guy on TikTok now. Like, all my whole class. Look, my daughter's twelve years old, and my wife's like, "Honey, are you gonna film something now while we're eating?" Okay, now we, we finish eating, but uh, uh, honey, could you just take half the day and film? Like, yeah. There's sometimes I don't know when to quit, man, but. My mind, man, uh, just being in this business, man, I, I'm a creative person, and I'm always thinking of something to create. I feel like we got nothing on this earth, man, but time, and I try to, like, make the best of any free time I got. Yeah. And I feel like uh, being creative is, is where my niche is at. And it's tough to not take advantage of the fact that we live in this time where you can just create content at any given moment and put it out to people immediately, right? Bro, this is... This is this this is the almost like the American dream, man. Yeah. You know, like um, it's free to do that. It's free to be creative. It's it's free to make somebody feel good about something you posted, or to make somebody laugh, or to to change and break the monotony of somebody's day. I mean, that's like that come at no cost to me. What is your What is your kids say? Because TikTok is generally for the children. So you know, I would imagine your twelve year old. That's what they say. That's what they say. <laughs> I would imagine. You know. Yeah. I'm competing against Rock and Kevin Hart. They're on there too now. Oh, uh, well, of course. They're following our truth. What does your kid say about the fact that, like, now all her classmates, you know, whether they were watching wrestling or not, they're definitely all on TikTok. They're now all seeing you look like a, look, look like a fool. Is she? Does she love it? A buffoon. Does, a buffoon. <laughs> does, she, does, does she does she enjoy the fact that because I would imagine her friends probably love it because, you know, I mean, if I was a kid and my friend's dad was doing this on, on TikTok, I'd be obsessed with it. But if my dad was doing it on yes. TikTok, I would probably not be as obsessed with it. <laughs> no, man, my daughter loves it. She does. Uh, my -year -old, my, oh, yeah, she loves it, man. She's like, Dad, will you be my friend? They've been watching you, following you on TikTok. <laughs> and, you know, everybody watches you on TikTok with the teeth in your mouth. Or she'll go back and um, look at the ones. She loves the teeth. And she'll go back and look at the teeth. Like, um, she promotes her dad as much as she can. That's incredible. Now, that's the American that's dream. That, I love that. <laughs> that's that, yeah. yeah that's, that's, love that's the most she could ever ask for. Did you realize, by the way, yeah. the Fox deal... The WWE made would not only be so good for WWE, but be so good for our truth. The whole thing starts with you getting to have an impromptu match with half of Fox's broadcast team, and then you end 2019. And this, to me, as a wrestling fan and somebody who's been watching wrestling for you know 30 years at this point, I don't know if people really understood what a big deal it was to have as much WWE representation as there was on New Year's Eve in Times Square on Fox with Steve Harvey, with Maria Menounos. The fact that not only were you guys there, but you were carrying out storylines. The 24-7 title was getting thrown around. Like, I mean, I thought that was enormous. Sam, thank you for that, man. And I felt that in my heart and my soul, man. And 
I want to go on record right now telling Vince, thank you for, for giving me the opportunity. I want to thank Fox for giving me the opportunity, man. And, no, I didn't know I would get as much coverage, as, as, as wide range as I'd gotten with this Fox deal, man. It, it's, it, it, it's helped the, the 24-7 title and the WWE brand just as much as, as USA been helping, man. It's like, it, you would be... I, man, I'm, I'm not surprised at how many people watched the New Year's Eve thing. I didn't know how big of a deal it was. Mm-hmm. Um, the ball dropping it and, and the New Year's thing, you know, you hear about it, but to be there and witness that, man, that was a huge deal. Probably like one of the biggest deals, biggest things I've been in, man, in 2019. Yeah. Did you, uh, do you have a favorite? Because I feel like, too, I was thinking about it, especially when I saw it on New Year's Eve, but you've seen it pop up, whether it was at Comic-Con, whether it was at, like I said, like the Fox Upfronts, all these spots, the 24-7 title, whether people realize it or not, has become this thing that WWE has never had where they could actually send talent to these spots. And instead of just having guys like you show up and explain to the world what WWE is, you can actually give them an example. You can you can go into their world. They don't have to enter into the WWE world anymore that you and Mojo or Elias or Drake or the Singh brothers or whoever it is, you guys can show up now and have been showing up into anybody else's world. And all of a sudden, yeah. the WWE is in their world and 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 their eyes are on it and it's 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 this I, to me it's this great commercial for the product that didn't exist before. Sam, you get it, man. You get it. You get it. And that's what that's what makes that 24/7 title so much different than any other title WWE have and has had because we're stepping into different genres of everybody's walks of life. And that's a great thing, man. The more people find out and know about WWE, the better to me. You know, yeah. better for everybody. Yeah. And I think that twenty four seven title, man, just it sets the ground, it sets the stage. Like you said, it's a way without even having to explain what WWE, what WWE is, what we do. It's giving them a demonstration, and you get to see it. And not one time have nobody been entertained. Exactly. Yeah. It's like you got thirty seconds to entertain somebody. What are you going to do? This is the perfect kind of vehicle to allow that to happen. And it doesn't take away from anything either. Then you can turn on Monday Night Raw, you can turn on SmackDown, and you're still going to have the same quality match over here, the same promo over here. Like, you, you've still got all these elements that create this wrestling show, but now we've got this this piece of it that I don't think existed before. Do you have a favorite 24-7 title defense that you were a part of in the last year or so? Man, there's so many of them, man, that was good, man. Um, <laughs> the golf course was good, man, because that uh, – they we we shot – I think we did maybe like three takes on that. Mm-hmm. And the last take is when I told Carmela to – like, we never even drove the golf cart before yet. <laughs> and I told her, I said, just – I said, when you push the gas, I said, you need to push it because these things are slow. It's probably going to put a putter along. I'm going to run past you. Stop, and then I'll jump on. She said, okay, Sam, I couldn't catch that damn thing, man. And she drugged me, man. She drugged me, man, the whole field of the golf court, man. And when we turned around, man, like the owner, it was about eight or nine guys over there, man, on the ground laughing that worked there. And uh, that was a funny moment, man, um, The the uh, on the uh, tarp of the airport. Yeah, I was going to ask. Is, one, man. Johnny is, Ace came up to that one. That was a funny one. Is the tarmac hot? It was cold at that time. Okay, good. <laughs> good, good. It was cold at that time. But just being out there and doing that, man, was like, I think mean, that was like the birth of like, okay, this thing can get really crazy. Yeah. And, and the the me coming on Drake on his honeymoon, that's one of my favorite ones too as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I feel like, uh, you know, and, and as long as the 24-7 title exists, I feel like you can't take anything away from how much Drake Maverick added to the whole thing by like making his wedding a part of it and then making the whole storyline and the honeymoon yes. and yes. and everything. I mean, I was very entertaining, but entertaining and funny as hell. Yeah, I think I was sold on the whole thing when I saw Jinder Mahal in his gear on a golf course. Once once he showed up to the golf course in full gear, yes. that's when I was like, okay, yes. I'm I'm sold. Like this, I get it. I'm sold. I'm here. I'm in it. I'm I'm in forever. Yes. <laughs> and that was the thing. Jinder was like. They want me in my gear. 
I said, dog, that's even better. I'm about to laugh now. <laughs> yeah. and I just remember him putting his gear on in his car, like not even understanding this. And then when he saw like he left in 24 hours, we had over a million views. It was like, I get it. I said, bro, I'm about to run with this thing. Yeah. So I mean, look at it. I, I, Fox dropped me into an interview, uh, the new movie, the uh, Dolomite's My Name. Yeah. Man, I, was, I got a chance to like uh, interview Eddie Murphy, Michael Keaton K, Wesley Snipes, um, and these people, man, um, was wanting to come to the show that night. And uh, Wesley Snipes was talking about becoming the first actor to become 24-7 general. Uh, so it's like, can you imagine if they put no that title on chance. Wesley Snipes? <laughs> How great that would have been if Blade yes, walked man. out with the title. <laughs> man, Wesley Snipes had his hand on his chin while we was, I was interviewing them, and he was still contemplating on... What do I have on my schedule tonight? Because I think I'm going to go to the Staples Center and try to win this title. By the way. That would have been great, man. Do you ever think about your life? I mean, how many people on this planet have met and, like, shared even some time with Wesley Snipes, Eddie Murphy, and Tupac Shakur? Like, how many people have met all those those three people? You know, I don't know that many people have met one of them. To, to to live this life where you've met all three of those people, it's like it's 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 baffling. It is. I mean, you just you just threw a pause in my ass, man. Like wow, man. Like yeah, that's that is really dope, man. And upon meeting Eddie Murphy, man, I, I, I when I walked in, he looked at me and he knew he recognized who I was. I'm like, so you watch Revenant? He said, Yeah, I watch. I got kids. Wow. And so I'm like, okay, so he's gonna be loose. And I said, man, do y'all mind? I said, Eddie, can I just look at you for, just give me like 42 seconds. And he bust out laughing. He said, 42 seconds? I said, yeah. And everybody else started laughing. And I legit stood there 42 seconds and watched Eddie Murphy. And I'm like, dude, you're an icon, man. I can't believe I'm standing here talking to you, man, about the interview you man. And we laughed. I don't know how they edited that uh, interview, man. But me and Eddie laughed so much as like I've been knowing him my whole life, man. Me and Wesley laughed so much, man. So it was like... This 24-7 man does so much, man. It's just introducing WWE to people or um, revisiting WWE with people and then them, like, just, you know what I'm saying, taking it all in, man, soaking it all up. How many of the ideas are yours and how many of the ideas are presented to you? Do you come to the table and go, here, ah, what if we did this? What if we did that? I want to do this. I want to do that. Or are there people calling you going, okay, here's what we're thinking. Here's what we want to do. Here's, here's where we want to go. We do both. Yeah. We do both because uh, uh, I would say uh, a good handful, a lot of man, I came up with um, the wedding thing, the honeymoon. Like uh, uh, we we just pick the most outrageous thing, man. Ideas might just happen. We just throw it up, man. It's like um, throwing poop against the wall, see what sticks. <laughs> yeah, and then turning it into lemonade. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you drink it, and it's yeah. good, it's flavorful. It's delicious, <laughs> sweet, it's wonderful. Uh, yes, almost you can say scrumptious. <laughs> I think you could. So you got the you got the Royal Rumble coming up on the 26th uh, in Houston. Is that the Royal Rumble? I think the, I, I, I believe it's it the is. The, I believe it is the Royal Rumble coming up on the 26th. Have you so? Man. Have you thought about like the elimination chamber? <laughs> yeah. See, see, that's what I think about. Like when you think about the Royal Rumble, and like I feel like your Money in the Bank Royal Rumble spot is going to be something that you get remembered for for a long time because that's like one of those perfect things. Do you ever get these ideas where like, oh man, this like pulling the ladder out and trying to climb it is perfect for this character? I wish I could do this every year because I don't know how I'm going to top it. Man, um, when I came up with that idea, uh, I went in Ben's office and I said, hey, I got an idea. I'm like, what? I was wondering if I, was, wondering if I had a ladder up under the, uh, the ring for the rumble. And he looked at me and burst out laughing because <laughs> they were doing it. <laughs> but you know, you know what? The, was like, the best part of that. how good it would have turned out, Sam. I didn't know if everybody would be able to follow it or would like, um, would get it. But here's the, here's the, this is the best part. I'm going to tell you what the best part of the bit was for somebody that was watching it. It's when you reached up because when you reached up, you put your arms out in like the shape of a briefcase. So your arms are like up, like almost like a square 
Like you think there's going to be a briefcase right above you and you don't realize until that moment that there's there's nothing there. Like, well, why would you think there was a briefcase nothing there? there. Yeah. But they moved it. <laughs> Have you thought they about? I got okie doke. <laughs> you did, you did, and then they eliminated you, and I didn't think it was fair. I didn't think it right. was fair. Yeah, yeah. Have you thought about what you might be able to pull off for the Royal Rumble this year? I've been thinking. I've been thinking. Well, if I get a, if I get the pay per view correct, I'm gonna get them right, and um, <laughs> it's gonna be a doozy. You know, I feel like I feel it's like at the doozy. WWE really should be providing you with some kind of pay per view calendar. So that way, you know, I think that they may be purposely trying to make it so that you can't keep up with when pay-per-views are because apparently everybody else gets this information and you don't. It doesn't seem fair. I think I'm being sabotaged uh, on the slot side. You know what I'm saying? I do too. Just to make our truth look like like I ain't got it all together. Like I, I can't get right. Which, you know what I'm saying? Like they're sending me the wrong pay-per-views on the wrong date. <laughs> do you have, before you know we wrap I'm showing up. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get it. I, I can see what's going on. It's clear to me. Uh, before we wrap up, do you have a, a most a, a favorite opponent in the twenty four seven title kind of genre? Because you've 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 had you know groups where you you tend to have one or two opponents that you work with for a set period of time, and then you move on to somebody else. Do you have a favorite era so far? Oh, man. It would have to be between Drake and Elias, man. Mm -hmm. It has to be between those two, man. Um, Sam has so many good 24-7 spots in there, man. I can't just pick one. Uh, and all the guys, man, good. What I just did with Tozawa was good, man. He's he's funny, too. I'd like to get him more time on that. Yeah, he was great. What do you think of the fact that you're a guy who's been in the ring with The Rock? You've been in the ring with John Cena, your childhood hero. <laughs> you've... you've You've yeah. been, you've been N every Saturday morning. Well, I know, I know, I remember. You've been NWA champion. You've been United States champion. You're a very decorated. You've had a very decorated career. How do you feel about the fact that we are we are dangling close to the idea that the twenty four seven championship may be your legacy in wrestling when it's all said and done? I am fine with that. I love it. I am. Like I'm, I'm beyond ecstatic about that, man. I, I've I've reached heights nobody else probably won't reach. I, I've been places, done things. I've joined together worlds, uh, made memories for people nobody else will ever be able to do, and that's the truth. I was at Madison Square Garden recently. I saw you exchanging the titles with the Singh brothers back and forth, and I said to myself, "That's odd." Yeah, that's right? odd. That's odd. Yeah, everything is odd. <laughs> yeah. Everything is odd, man. That's, that's you know odd. what I'm saying? Yeah. It was odd that they had me there against both of them. You know what I'm saying? That's odd. It was odd that both of them wanted one title. <laughs> you want two titles? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I do. Why ain't y'all going after the tag? Title? Why are you going after mine? That's odd. <laughs> it is. It's odd, man. Truth, I appreciate so much you giving me uh, all this time. Everybody obviously needs to be tuning in for the Royal Rumble on Sunday, January 26th, WWE Network. If you're in Houston, get those tickets. Monday Night Raw, of course, every Monday night on the USA Network. And Truth, you're a wonderful man. I appreciate it. My dog, appreciate it, Sam. Hey, you know I got some new music coming out, man. You going to bring me back on when I, um, when I get my release date for this new single coming out? Anytime. You tell me when that music's coming out, and, and absolutely. You got it? You got it. Awesome. Sounds good, man. Right, Thank Jimmy you. Jimmy said, what's up, man? Look, Jimmy said, what's up? Oh, tell Jimmy. It's been a while since I've talked to Jimmy. Tell Jimmy I said hi. He said hi. <laughs> okay. All right, yeah, man. Thank you. Down, man. He was a happy little tight, man. <laughs> All right, man. Take care. <laughs>